Welcome to Push Prime. Configuring Push Prime is very easy and generally takes less than five minutes. This tutorial will guide you through the whole process of configuring Push Prime for your website. After you sign up and log in, you'll be brought to our dashboard. In order to use Push Prime on your website, you will first have to add your website in your dashboard. Adding your website is a very simple process. We collect a few pieces of info from you and then you're done. Click Continue on the web button. It will bring up our new website dialog box. The first thing to enter is your website address. Skip the HTTP or HTTPS part at the beginning and just enter your domain name. At this point, you have to indicate if your website is secure or not secure. If it's secure, it will have HTTPS at the start of it. If you know that it does, click yes. If you know that it does not, if it just starts with HTTP, click no. If you're unsure, click I don't know, please check that for me, and you will get an answer. If your website supports HTTPS, you can click next. If it does not, you will need to choose a subdomain. Your users will have to go through that subdomain to register for notifications. Don't worry, you don't have to do anything other than come up with a subdomain name. If you type a subdomain that's already taken, it'll turn red. That won't allow you to use it. If you pick a unique subdomain, it will be blue. Once you've chosen your subdomain, click Next. This will open the General Info dialog. At this point, you can select the icon that you would like as your default on Push Prime Push Notifications. This icon is optional but it's highly recommended that you upload an icon which reflects your business or brand. For best results, use square images with a size of at least 192 pixels on either dimension. For this example, I'm going to leave it with the Push Prime logo. Then, type the title of your website. By default, Push Prime uses our default parameters for sending notifications to Google Chrome. However, we do recommend that you add your own Google Push API key. You can get your own free from Google inside a Google account. If you have your own Google Push API key, check this box and enter your credentials. As well, for Apple Safari, you will need an Apple Developer account. Once you have your Apple Developer account, click the box and enter the information. You can come back at any time into your settings and make changes to these. When you click Next, we have our consent dialog configuration. Web browsers can be very stubborn when it comes to push notifications, generally to prevent people from abusing the service. So they don't allow us to customize the default permission window that opens. We've observed that opt-in rates significantly increase if you explain to users why you need to send them notification. This is when consent dialog comes into play. Before showing the default permission dialog, a special additional modal dialog will appear in the web page explaining to them why you need to send them notifications. The following image will show how it will look. You can completely customize the colors and text from styles after the initial setup is done. This dialog will appear, and then after it's clicked, the default dialog will appear, setting everything into place. We highly recommend that you set the consent dialog to yes. The Reminder button is a small icon which appears in the bottom left or bottom right of your web page. The Reminder button is used to track the permission status of the users. If they initially decline their permission request, you can use the Reminder button to grant permissions. The Reminder button is also customizable from the Styles tab. We recommend that you keep this on Yes. When you click Next, you'll get your embed code, which you need to add into your web page. That is this code right here. You will have to add this into any page where you want to enable Push Prime. Make sure it's before the closing body tag. If you're running a WordPress, Joomla, or Magento site, you can use our dedicated plugins to add the code automatically. If your website does not support HTTPS, this is all you need to do, and you can stop here. Just click Finish, and you're good to go. If your website supports HTTPS, there is an additional step. 
As an HTTPS user, the dialog you get with your code will look like this, very similar to the other, but you will have a button to configure the native opt-in. Click this button to open the native opt-in configuration. In addition to the embed code you added earlier, you will have to add one additional line of code in head element in your HTML document. If you're using our plugin for WordPress, Joomla, or Magento, go to Settings and enable Native Opt-in Tags option. After you click on the blue Click Here link, it will download a zip file. These are our helper files that you will need to upload into the root of your web server. That may be a public underscore HTML folder. After that, click on the Verify button so that our server can verify that those files are publicly acceptable. Once the verification is done, a Finish button will appear. You can click it to finish the website setup. If you encounter any issues, please feel free to reach out to us and we will be happy to help.